It's a TV show which gave us the keys to imagination, which set the standard for out-of-the-box storytelling, using an opening theme which people can still recite even to this day. Released in 1959, the series set a new benchmark for science fiction on TV. Yes, we're talking about The Twilight Zone, and this is Science 5. The Twilight Zone was created by Rod Serling, who first explored the idea of creating a science fiction TV series in a story he wrote called The Time Element, which aired in 1958 as part of Westinghouse Desilu Playhouse. Fortunately, this episode was so successful that it paved the way for The Twilight Zone to be produced the following year. Of greater significance was this new series allowed Rod to explore a number of new ideas and concepts by setting his stories in different worlds and time periods, whilst tackling controversial and taboo topics with a greater amount of freedom. The series itself is anthology based, in that all the episodes are self-contained which means they can be viewed in any order. Also being for the most part a science fiction show, the stories can be set not only in the past, present or the future, but also on other planets as well. For this reason there is absolutely no restriction as to what they may contain regarding themes and concepts, which is why they not only push the boundaries of imagination, but are highly unpredictable which is one of the show's biggest strengths. Importantly though, the series was made at a time when high quality science fiction stories mostly appeared in either paperback or radio plays. So having the Twilight Zone come into existence when science fiction itself wasn't taken very seriously, especially on TV, was really significant for the growth of the genre. One of the things that made the show a must watch was actually Serling himself. From season 2 onwards he would actually appear at the start of every episode to introduce the upcoming story. For someone who wasn't trained as an actor, his ability to speak eloquently and clearly allowed him to grab the viewer's attention, whilst his voice provided a level of comfort which actually made the audience believe that they themselves had actually entered the Twilight Zone. The series ran for 5 years which included a total of 156 episodes, most of which ran for 30 minutes, except in season 4 when they were lengthened to an hour, although for the 5th and final season they returned back to 30 minutes, which was Serling's preferred duration. Although the series was mostly shot on film, as a cost-saving measure, six episodes were recorded in season two on the then new medium of videotape, which unfortunately not only marked a jarring image quality drop compared to the show's typical style, but it can also make those episodes difficult to watch because they just look so different. Needless to say, the episodic nature of the show allowed for a large number of actors to feature in it. Somewhat ironically, many of them, despite being relatively unknown at the time, would go on to become future sci-fi and pop culture alumni, such as William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, George Takai, Jonathan Harris, Billy Mumy, Dean Stockwell, Martin Landau, Bill Bixby, Roddy McDowell and Julie Newmar, among many others. In addition, both established and future stars also appeared in the show, such as Ida Lupino, Buster Keaton, Mickey Rooney, Burgess Meredith, Agnes Moorhead, Ron Howard, Robert Duvall, Charles Bronson, Burt Reynolds and even Robert Redford among others. The show was such a success that new and updated versions kept appearing for decades to come, though none of them ever eclipsed the original, including the feature film released in 1983. But if the show was to have a sister series, it would probably be The Outer Limits released in the 1960s, as it's often considered a companion piece to The Twilight Zone, especially as both shows feature similar themes and equally unique stories. Despite The Twilight Zone being touted as a science fiction show, it was at its core a psychological study in human behaviour, especially when people were placed in difficult, unusual or unexplainable situations. Much like the real world, there would be those who would attempt to exploit the people and resources around them, whilst others would instead put everyone else's safety before themselves. It's for this reason the show can be considered a great example of the syndrome known as cause and effect, or in more simple terms, the practice of karma. For this reason alone, the series is far more than just another sci-fi show. If anything, it's an educational one and should be celebrated as such. However, The Twilight Zone went further than just being another TV show. Amongst some of its achievements were the tie-in products associated with it. Although there wasn't a great deal released, it was enough to solidify the show's place in the pantheon as one of sci-fi's greatest TV success stories. So who should see the series? Without doubt this is a show for all ages, particularly as it can generate some great discussion among viewers. It's also very family friendly, even if some of the concepts might be a little over children's heads. So if you haven't seen the series before then you're in for a treat. The Twilight Zone offers something for everyone, and even after 7 decades, it's still both entertaining and thought provoking. And for that reason alone, it's well worth watching. <laughs>